Astronomers haven't always been able to capture photographs this majestic. Pretty much every object you can see here is a galaxy. You've got this progressive view into the past. We're looking back to a time when the universe was very much younger than it is now. The light from these galaxies has been traveling for vastly different lengths of time, so the further a subject you can see are shown pretty early in their evolution. And things were different. Galaxies were nowhere near as elegant as they are today. It's as if you could take a picture of modern day Melbourne and actually photograph giant megafauna in the background with dinosaurs behind them. But photographs themselves are a relatively new technology. This is a sketch observed by the Great Melbourne Telescope in the late 19th century. The Great Melbourne Telescope has had a very unusual career. It was the biggest telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. This was Melbourne in the ascendancy towards the end of the 19th century. Melbourne was a thriving metropolis in 1880, the very peak of Melbourne's growth and wealth. The Royal Exhibition Building behind me was um, completed uh, in time to host the International Exhibition when the world came to Melbourne, 1.5 million visitors. The Australian International Exposition, rare exhibits from the Antipodes. During the gold rushes, it was known as Marvellous Melbourne. This telescope was an absolute icon of marvellous Melbourne and did have that international reputation. Astronomy was greatly romanticised in the 19th century and the telescope was a symbol of a new and exciting understanding of our place in the universe. The Great Melbourne Telescope observed distant galaxies, faint nebula and even tracked comets across the southern skies. As a piece of telescope engineering, this is almost the consummate example. It really set the scene for telescopes for, for many years afterwards. However, it wasn't without its criticisms. The telescope certainly did not perform so satisfactorily as it could be desired. It reflected strongly on the incompetency of the persons who ordered such an instrument, but on nothing else. Unfortunately, the telescope was built with uh, old-fashioned ideas in terms of its optics because uh, it was built for people to use an eyepiece and do hand and eye drawings of what they saw, kind of neglecting this new technology of photography. Its optical shortcomings, coupled with the economic crash of 1893, meant the telescope fell into disrepair. With the marvellous years behind them, the instrument was quietly moved to Canberra and not much was heard for an entire century. The last 100 years has led to an absolute explosion in the number of objects that we can look at. Um, black holes, we're talking different nebulae, we're talking pulsars, so we're talking radio waves. It was rebuilt effectively with a new mirror and new tube and then went into a career of active use. My name's John, I worked on Toronto Observatory in the late 90s. We made use of a refurbished version of the Great Melbourne Telescope. The updated Great Melbourne Telescope was the central instrument in the international search for dark matter. That at the time was the largest electronic camera in existence, and we're talking early 90s. It was one of the very early uses of CCD cameras in this way, and uh, allegedly collected more data in the first year or so than had been collected in all the history of astronomy before that. Which had echoes, if I may say this, when the Hubble telescope was launched in 1990, and it was very quickly realised that the Hubble had the most perfect mirror ever made, but it was made to the wrong prescription. So it was actually the wrong shape and needed to be fixed, which it was. However, Unlike Hubble, the scientific vindication of the telescope was tragically short-lived. There's helicopters regularly going over the top. You know, we'd seen the smoke coming from the west. At some point the smoke turned black and one police car came up and he saw us and he said, what are you doing up here? I was actually at my home in Coonabarabran. At that time, I was the astronomer in charge of the Anglo-Australian Observatory. I remember as the day progressed, seeing uh, emails from my colleagues getting steadily more and more gloomy. The 2003 Canberra bushfires took four lives, destroyed almost 500 buildings, and completely decimated the observatory. The temperatures were so high, the aluminium dome melted onto the telescope and practically destroyed it. Well, it'll certainly be nest, uh, <laughs> half a ton of 
precision figured Pyrex has been reduced to shards like that. That bushfire was what effectively brought an end to the scientific career of the telescope. And at the end of it I said, there's really no hope that this will come to anything other than perhaps bits and pieces in a museum. It's the box sitting there with all the eyepieces in it. Because you can see how it's... That's it, Ty. Alright, now, just if we lift the lid... Amazing. In 2009, the experts and dedicated volunteers started the astronomical task of putting those bits and pieces back together again. The Great Melbourne Telescope represents a time of great aspiration in Melbourne. It will be open to the public where the original observatory is sited. After 10 years of painstaking restoration, the Great Melbourne Telescope will look to the skies again. So we had an unusual, really unusual opportunity to bring this telescope back to life so people can see what a monument of 19th century engineering it was. I think it's, a, it's hard to overestimate its importance. There's a beauty in the physical instrument itself. There's a certain craftsmanship that goes into making a telescope of that size. In order to get people actually engaged in science, we do need to tell a story. And sometimes that story actually takes you back to when an instrument was made. So many different stories from so many different perspectives, whether it's the technology and the expertise and what it takes to make some sense of our place over time. And when we look through its eyepiece, not only will we be looking back to ancient starlight, we will also be looking back to Melbourne's marvellous past.